Okay, so today we have Operator, That's Not the Way It Feels by Jim Croce. Um, it's always a pleasure to come back to Jim. I was looking through my videos just to see when the last time I did one of his songs, and it was about five months ago. So that's good, uh, you know, a good amount of time. But if it was up to me, you know, but I have to have some diversity in there. But uh, if it was up to me, I'd listen to Jim every day or react to him every day. But uh, let's get into this one today, Operator, That's Not the Way It Feels. It's one that's been on my bucket list and uh, finally coming to it. So uh, let's go. That's not the way it feels by Jim Croce. I don't know if there's a singer, if there's an artist, whatever, a band either, <laughs> that makes me feel the way that uh, Jim does. And again, you know, he's been gone for so long, but his songs are still so poignant and still so heartbreaking to this day for, you know, new listeners like me. And uh, <clears throat> my goodness, I've been talking for too much, too long, and I feel like my voice is going on me. But um, this song is just, like I said, it's about heartbreak. It's about pain. It's about, uh, it's a heart-wrenching song altogether, a heartbreaking song altogether. I mean, it's just so... And this is about, you know, like I said, with Jim, it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, who are you, who you are, whatever, what your beliefs are. 
he can he reaches such a diverse audience you know his songs can make anybody feel feel something you know emotional um and you're talking about a guy here just to say at the top, a guy, I guess, who's in service, who's in the army, whatever you would say, uh, try, you know, placing a call. It's the sixties. We're talking about an operator. Obviously it's in the title, uh, placing a call to somebody, I guess, to an ex, uh, ex girlfriend and uh, an ex best friend who I guess they're together now. And he's trying to say, you know, everything's fine. But, uh, when he's talking to this operator, he kind of finds out, actually, I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good at all. Um, and, uh, just again, he's so, uh, Jim here is so good. His voice, at some parts, you know, near the end, I would say his voice almost breaks in a way um, where he's talking to the operator, telling the operator to keep the dime. And uh, his voice goes a little bit, I don't know if it's going to break or not, but it just sounds a little bit softer. He sounds a little more, he sounds generous, I guess you might say, because again, he's talking to this operator, kind of saying thanks. Uh, so his voice is a little bit softer there. But uh, anyway, just what a great, it's such a warm voice too. I have to always say that. Uh, it's just so inviting so friendly and uh, it just seems like a guy you know you'd you, he would be your best friend i mean jim croce just through videos i've seen such of him he seemed seemed like such a nice guy such a genuine guy and uh and that comes across too from his widow uh ingrid who talks about him and such and um you know telling saying that he was such a nice guy but um anyway and as well uh this song is just <laughs> I, I have to talk about too with maury uh maury muleheisen i want to say my goodness and uh how him on guitar here as well you know they were a great duo of course you know maury was usually there with jim but as it's put here on wikipedia maury was on lead acoustic guitar uh, of course jim's on guitar as well and uh as well uh terry cashman is on back and vocals on this track uh, on drums, Gary Chester, and bass, Joe Macho. I just love giving, you know, I like giving people their due. But anyway, uh, obviously here, it's always about uh, Jim's voice, I would say, on a track, uh, you know, on one of his tracks. But um, some intricate, soft guitar playing, I would say here. You know, nothing too overbearing. It's so tasteful for the song. It's so kind of down um, low-key in a way, because again, we're talking about a sad subject here, and um, a relatable subject, and uh, yeah, so I just love the way they would go with their music to let Jim shine, but um, but at the same time, they would shine themselves too. And I did want to mention that I see here on songfacts.com that apparently Jim was inspired to write this while in the, uh, well, in the service, uh, you know, as he was a National Guard, and uh, that uh, he would see guys, you know, at the phone, trying to place a call to the operator, trying to get back to their lover or whatever. And also you talk about here, <clears throat> as they put it with Dear John Letters, where I guess, you know, girlfriends or whoever would uh, send them a letter and say, it's over. Um, I found somebody else. And that's just, it's so gutting because you're away and you can't do anything about it. And all you can do is cry or whatever uh, since your girlfriend left you because you're away and she found somebody else. And it's just like, ooh, I mean, it's just so painful in that way. And you have all these guys at the phone lining up. And I think it was, it talks about too how it was kind of in the rain, I guess. Uh, that's what Jim said um, when he saw this happening. And he kind of said it was surreal. As I'm just kind of paraphrasing like a, a quote I see here. But just all these guys lined up trying to call their ex-girlfriend to this point and finding out, uh, yeah, it's over. And uh, just and again, just being away and just finding this out. I mean, my God, that's heartbreaking. Even more heartbreaking than obviously just being home and you know it, it being over. But um, anyway, so then going into these lyrics now with the first verse. Operator... Well, could you help me place this call? Uh, see, the number on the matchbook is old and faded. And again, talking about the 60s here, you think about a matchbook, <clears throat> talk, you know, writing on the matchbook, an old number here. She's living in L.A. with my uh, my best old ex-friend, Ray. I can't talk. But uh, that line says, says so much. I mean, she's living in L.A. with my best old ex-friend, Ray. So I guess Ray and his, his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend at this point, are together. Uh, and now he doesn't want anything to do with them. Uh, the narrator here, Jim, whatever. And uh, But at the same time, he's calling them to tell them that he's fine. He's over the blow. And uh, we find out that uh, apparently he's not. A guy she said she knew well and sometimes hated. It seems like he, uh, maybe she was lying there because it seems like now they are together. <clears throat> then we go on with the chorus. But isn't that the way they say it goes? And I feel like... And a lot of Jim's songs, he has lines like that where it's like, but isn't that the way it goes? It's like, isn't that life? What can I do about it? He kind of accepts um, that this has happened. He can't do anything about it. And uh, I think about a song like, um, you know, Time in a Bottle, where he, I feel like there was lines of that where it kind of says the same kind of thing as this, you know, but isn't that the way it goes? What can you do? Um, you know, I, I, I got to accept it. Uh, well, let's forget all that. <laughs> Again, you know, I, I'm pouring my heart out to you, but let's forget all that. I just want to call him and say, I'm over it. And, you know, that's it. Have a good day. And give me the number if you can find it. So I can call them and tell them I'm fine. And to show I've overcome the blow. I've learned to take it well. 
And then these lines here are just uh, heart wrenching. Um, I only wish my words could just convince myself. I only wish, you know, because he's lying to himself. I only wish this was all true when I'm telling you. Uh, but it's not. Um, that it just wasn't real. But that's not the way it feels. Again, you know, just talking about how I am over this. But actually, that's not the way it feels. I'm a liar. And it uh, still hurts. And then we go on with the second uh, verse here. Operator, what well, can you help me place this call? Because I can't read the number that you just gave me. There's something in my eyes. So now he's crying, of course. And I talked about earlier with the rain and such. Uh, so that can't help either when you're writing down on a paper or whatever. You know, it happens every time. I think about the love that I thought would save me. So it feels like he thought this girl was the one, whatever. And um, But obviously, I guess she wasn't. And, uh, you know, he thought he was, she was going to save him. But now that's not true. That's not going to happen. He's just he, he's trying to accept all these facts. And he's just having so much such a hard time and it's just you know full of heartache and uh pain and it's just also tragic and uh jim just paints such a uh sad picture i mean it's it's incredible then we go on with the chorus one more time it was just so good the post chorus that's not the way it feels and then the third and last verse here operator well let's forget about this call i don't mean to laugh but again it's just like after everything you said operator Never mind. Good Lord. Uh, let's forget about this call. Um, there's no one there I really wanted to talk to because now he understands she's feeling like, actually, I'm not over it. I don't want to talk to them. Uh, never mind. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time. Uh, you've been so much more than kind. You can keep the dime. And again, I feel like at this part, like I said earlier, I think, in this uh, third verse where he's talking to the operator, thanking the operator for their kindness, whatever, for putting up with him at this point, with Jim, whatever, and saying... Uh, you know, uh, this is where I feel like his voice, I don't say breaks, but he, it comes it becomes a little bit more softer or something like that, where he just kind of, now he's kind of showing his generosity to the operator uh, and being like, thank you for, go, you know, going through this with me. And, uh, you know, this little uh, <clears throat> therapy session in a way. And, uh, you know, I, I'm realizing I'm not over it and I can't call them. Uh, that's not just going to, it's not going to lead to a good road for me. And uh, so thanks for the time. Keep the dime. Good Lord. Then we have the chorus one more time. And, uh, and again, just those lines that get repeated a few times. I only wish my words could just convince myself that it just wasn't real, but that's not the way it feels. And, uh, you know, I want to say <laughs> for some of these lines, you know, that's such a poignant line. That's a tragic line. That's the most important line of the song, whatever. But the whole song it's full of these lines. The whole song is full of tragic tragedy and um, and just loss and just sadness. And uh, again, that's what Jim was so, my goodness gracious, so good at in his writing. He was just so good at making you feel, no matter who you were, why can't I'm burping or something? Um, no matter who you were or who you are, or whatever, making you feel this way and making you feel the way he, you know, was whatever when he wrote the song or trying to find that inspiration when he wrote the song. Because I do know he was with his wife Ingrid at the time that he was in uh, the service, so he was, you know, he was happy that way. But um, again, I guess it was inspired by guys he saw <clears throat> who was, you know, finding out that uh, it's over and uh, you can't do anything. You're in service, and you, all you can do again. It's just be sad and emotional. But um, again, uh, it's always a treat to come back to Jim here. Uh, again, this song was a little bit longer, I feel like, than other songs I've reacted to by him, which is um, a blessing, I have to say, and a pleasure again. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I can't say that enough. I'm always happy to come back to Jim here and, uh, and just feel. I mean, my God, I just feel that warmth in his voice. And uh, and that guitar playing from Maury is always so good as well. And uh, always so raw and always so honest. I mean, those guys are always honest as hell. It's just so good. So anyway, I guess that's all I'm going to say. My voice is going on me or something. Good Lord. <clears throat> my God. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all this stuff. Really appreciate all the support. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.